Welcome back to our series, Boondocking 101, where we cover the basics of boondocking and how to better prepare yourself for dry camping. My name is Chris Henner with the Flying Hens, and thanks for joining me today. We're going to cover in this video how to refill your RV with fresh water when you run out. One of the most kind of annoying things about dry camping is you have no hookups. So when you run out of water, when you fill your gray tanks and black tanks, like you have to move your RV to go take care of those issues, unless you have remote ways to do that. So I'm gonna talk about how you remotely fill your RV so that you can keep your great boondocking spot and not lose it or have to do the extra work of packing up camp and towing your RV or driving your RV out to go uh, get new supplies. So. I want to talk about the equipment that we use first in this video and then at the end of the video I'm going to show you the whole process of how we do it when we're out in the middle of nowhere. So what we've got here, I'm going to start with our Aquatank 2 water bladder, okay? So I'm going to have a link to each one of these things uh, as we go uh, to help you find the equipment uh, that you need. This, as you can see, was about the size of a small football, but when you open it up, it's actually a 60 gallon water bladder. So it saves an incredible amount of space in, uh, in your RV or in your truck or whatever it is that you, uh, wherever you store it, and um, will significantly refill whatever tank you've got. Like we have an 80 gallon fresh tank so 60 gallons is perfect but they do make ones that are i think 120 150 gallons or they make smaller ones for 30 gallons if you need something uh, of that size uh, it comes with two uh, ports on it okay one port on the top to fill uh, and then one on the bottom to fully uh, kind of empty it into your rv so I went and added these ball valves on here because I like to like control every little bit of water because every little uh, drop of water counts when you're boondocking. The uh, nice thing about this is it's a really thick uh, material. So when it lays in the back of the truck bed, it's not gonna get damaged very easily. We've had it for over a year and a half now and there isn't one leak that uh, that's coming out of it, okay? In order to fill, you have to go and find uh, water spigots somewhere, right? So we do things like campgrounds. Uh, they'll usually give you some water. They might charge you five bucks for it. Uh, like gas stations. Sometimes I, I can get some water from a gas station if I tell them, hey, I'm filling up my truck. Like, I mean, heck, 100, 100 bucks worth of diesel. Can I take 60 gallons of water from your spigot? Uh, you know, if I know somebody in the area, I can fill it up at their house. Uh, we did that one time out in uh, Wyoming, and then uh, even uh, pull it from lakes or streams if you need water uh, and you have a good water filter, or you're just pulling the water in to like you know clean yourself with or, or brush your teeth. I think you can get away with uh, a stream or a lake if it's a nice clean one. Uh, otherwise, uh, just any spigot you can find will do. This is in case you find a damaged spigot. This is called a water band, okay? So imagine if this was the spigot and the threads were damaged or they were cut off or it has a nozzle on the end that's like a, a smooth nozzle. This is called a water band. You can take this and it just pops over the edge and it kind of narrows down as it goes all the way in so that it can make a nice good seal. And then you can just hook up your garden hose uh, or I should say this side, garden hose right onto the end and still fill from a bad spigot. So that's kind of a nice nifty little thing. Uh, we use uh, quick connects on most of our fittings so that, you know, just makes things faster. So I'd invest in a few of those. Uh, 12 volt water transfer pump. So you're gonna need to be able to take the water from this that's been filled from the spigot and then transfer it into your RV. That's where this comes in. This is a 12 volt one. They make 120 volts, so you can plug it into a regular outlet as well. But uh, the 12 volt ones come with uh, alligator clips on the end, so you can clip it to like the terminals on a 12 volt battery. However, uh, I don't have a battery near my water uh, kind of console on the outside. So, but I do have a bunch of 12 volt wires for lighting and things like that. So 
I spliced in an SAE connector, okay, looks like this, and put them on the water pump as well, so that now I just have a constant power source right over there by the water contain, uh, compartment. The uh, 12 volt pumps though, they're directional. So there's an arrow on here that says the water flows this way. So you have to make sure that you hook it up correctly. Uh, be aware of that. So this will connect into uh, the port on here. Then it'll draw the water through here, connect up a hose to your RV, and you're good to go. Some of the RVs, they have just a little gravity wire uh, fill on the side. And you just take the other hose on this end and uh, just drop it in there. And you can fill your RV that way. We have an actual garden hose attachment on ours that uh, you actually have to fill directly into that uh, with pressure. So the water pump helps with that as well. I have heard though that if you kind of, if you have the winterize feature on yours, you could use the water pump that's on your RV uh, in the winterize uh, position and then turn on your water pump and it'll draw the water in, uh, which would be nice and helpful. I have not done that myself, but also that's more wear and tear on your water pump in your RV. And it's a whole heck of a lot easier to replace this guy for 50 bucks uh, than to have to go crawl into your basement bay and replace that one that I'm sure is probably not 50 bucks because, you know, RV parts are not the cheapest thing in the world. So I use an external one. Uh, this little guy right here, this comes with the water pump, or at least it came with this one. And the idea here is this will connect onto the water hose, uh, the garden hose side like this. And you connect it up to the uh, intake port and you can set it in water, like a stream or a lake or a bucket or a large, like kind of shallow tank. And it has basically a, a suction pad on this side to draw water up and into uh, your bag if you wanted to collect water that way as well. Uh, then the most important feature uh, is a good water filter if you're going to use the water inside for more than just a shower or whatnot. We use any spigot in the, or any faucet in the RV uh, for drinking water as well because we use a clear source water filter. So let's go take a look at that. All right, so this is our clear source ultra water filter right here, and it is a large three canister water filter. What it has is a five micron filter that removes like dirt and rust. It has a 0.5 micron filter, which is a carbon filter. So it removes most of the other stuff out of the water, like uh, some bacteria and some of the amoebas and things of that nature that are uh, 0.5 microns or larger. Then we have a 0.2 micron filter. This is the final stage that even this will remove viruses because it has a special coating on it that attracts uh, with uh, like an ionized coating. Uh, and it will pull viruses out of the water, which makes basically any drinking water. Remember when I said lakes and streams and things like that? We can drink lake and stream water because of this. So uh, what we have right over here, the five micron filter is basically what any of those, you know, those blue inline filters that you can buy from Camping World and Gander and, and that, that sort of thing. That's all that it is right here. It removes dirt out of your water. It doesn't remove any of the other harmful things like viruses and bacteria and uh, other kind of waterborne illness uh, things that you you don't want in your drinking water. So if you have one of those inline little kind of five micron filters, don't drink water from it. Uh, just And you're gonna be stuck with having uh, one gallon jugs in your rig just to try, kind of drink with. Uh, but if you just want to use your water tank for showering when you're out boondocking, those are totally fine. But I suggest investing in one of these. Uh, we have installed it on the side of the RV here and I put in kind of permanent plumbing fixtures. It's made to just be an inline uh, deal. So you can just set it on the ground outside, uh, just like you'd use one of those small blue filters. You hook up one of your, uh, uh, hook up a clear source and you're good to go. So guys, that's the equipment that we use. Now I wanna show you the process uh, that we go through to refill our water.
First, we head to our water bin and get out our hoses and our AquaTank water bladder. This bladder is 60 gallons, which is perfect for filling our nearly empty 80 gallon fresh tank. I've modified our bladder and I've added a quarter turn ball valve to easily control the water and spill less. When boondocking, every drop counts. Next, you need to find a spigot. For us, we can use any water source, a campground, house, gas station, RV repair shop, and even pump directly from a lake or stream because we have a clear source ultra, which filters down to 0.2 microns and even removes viruses. Most places will give you free water or charge a small fee. We usually ask a gas station in conjunction with a diesel fill-up. Next, we get the truck in position and make sure the bed is clear on the back end. 60 gallons of water is 500 pounds, so we don't want to puncture the bladder with anything uh, in the back of the bed. When laid flat, the 60 gallon bladder fits perfectly between the tailgate and the fifth wheel hitch. And next we connect the hoses, uh, make sure that the fitting is tight. I leave the valve shut for now to prevent too much air from filling the bladder so that once again, I can maximize every drop of water for dry camping. Off to the spigot to turn on the water. In this case, we had to get creative with multiple hoses to reach. Once the water is on and has filled up the hose, we open up the bladder's ball valve and five to 10 minutes later, Poof, we have a full bladder. Close off the ball valve and disconnect the water and we are ready to roll out. The AquaTank 2 is a, a sturdy system and we've traveled many, many, many miles even over washboard roads and it has not been damaged yet after a year and a half. Once we pull up to the RV, we get our 12 volt water transfer pump. In the cargo area by the water panel, I've spliced an SAE connector into my 12 volt electrical system with an inline fuse. I can quickly connect 12 volt items now to uh, a constant power source. I've added a similar connector to the water pump, and so next we connect a hose to the water connection for the RV and switch the Anderson valve to tank fill. And uh, in order to fill up the fresh tank, make sure that the RV's water pump is turned off, connect the same hose to the outflow side of the uh, water pump, and uh, the water pump is directional, so double check the flow arrows. The uh, final connection before we turn the water pump on is the hose from the water bladder to the pump inlet. Time to connect the pump to a power source and the 12 volt power or pump comes standard with alligator clips that you can connect to a 12 volt battery, but I uh, replaced that with the SAE connector. And movie magic, we're done. It takes about 20 minutes to drain the bladder and you need to turn off the uh, pump before it runs dry and causes damage. Reverse the whole process and the job is done. Thanks for stopping by and watching this video. I hope it helped you guys out. If you want to know more about RVing and also to follow along in our journey, go ahead and click down here to subscribe to our channel. And if you want to know more about boondocking in general, start with our first boondocking 101 video right here. And if you want to know more about boondocking electrical and solar, that's right here. Have a great day.